Hello everyone. Hope you're doing well. Welcome to DC Technet. DC Technet is your own channel, so do like, share and subscribe the channel. It motivates us to create new content. So today we are going to discuss on a uh, say share permissions. And let's see what we have today. Today we'll be saying what are share permissions, what are NTFS permissions, the difference between share permissions and NTFS permissions. Look at the outcome or the result in a situation of a conflict. And uh, we'll see some of the best practices for granting folder permissions. So what are share permissions? So when we share a folder and want to set a permission for that folder, those are share permissions. So essentially, share permissions determine the type of access others have to the share folder across the network. So these are the share permissions. We have full, change and read. Now what are NTFS permissions? So NTFS permissions are used to manage access or security to files and folders that are stored on the NTFS file system. So these are the NTFS permissions, full, full control, modify, read, execute. These are the NTFS permissions. So let us understand the difference now between say share permissions and NTFS permissions. So we have three share permissions, full, change and read. So we have three share permissions, full change and read over here. So we can see in this picture for the username Sylvia, we have three share permissions. And for NTFS permissions, we have five primary NTFS permissions, full control, modify, read, read and execute and write. So I won't be going in depth of each and every type of permission. We'll create a separate video for that. Currently, we are only focusing on the difference between share permission and NTFS permission. So here we have our NTFS or security permissions in our day to day language. So this is the co comparative picture of both the type of permission. So under shared permissions, the, the permission change that is read, write, execute and delete is equivalent to modify in our NTFS permissions. Now let us look at the outcome in the situation of a conflict. Let's say we have a username Amanda and we have a folder named sales data. So what we did, we granted or we configured shared permissions as full to Amanda on the sales data folder and we configured read permissions to Amanda on the same sales data folder but this time we configured the NTFS or the security permissions. So what is the outcome, what is the resultant set of permissions that Amanda will have on the sales data folder. So the outcome will be read. So Amanda will have read access on the sales data folder. Even we have given full on say share permission, but Amanda will have read permissions. So why, why it is like that? Why? the behavior is like this. The reason is the most restricted 
wins. So, between share permissions and NTFS permissions, the one which is most restricted will always and always win. Let's take another example. So again, for Amanda, we configured read as shared permissions on the sales data folder and as NTFS permissions, we configured or we granted full control to Amanda on the sales data folder. So again, what will be outcome then? So definitely the outcome will be read again because the background mechanism is the most restricted will win. So whenever we as an administrator, we are configuring permissions. So we have to take these things in our consideration that this is how it works at the back end. The most restricted always and always wins. So one question in my mind, okay, when I was uh, understanding or when I was into say beginning of my career, giving permissions, working on file servers, again, one question came in my mind. Does granting full control at the share level also grant permission to manage that share? Does granting full control at the share level also grant full con say permissions to manage that share for example in this picture we have granted full control share permission to the username sylvia so the answer is no giving someone full control at the share level does not allow them to manage or do anything with the share because the permission is share permission and it's not security or NTFS permission. So that's the reason. Say Sylvia won't be able to do anything with the share because we have just given full control at the share level, not at the NTFS level. So some of the best practices which are followed in the industry you for say share permissions. So your entire objective when using permissions should be let's say to operate on a policy of least privilege. So wherever users only have access to the files and folders they need to do their job that's it. So you don't have to give more access to the users. It's the least privilege, that should be the policy. And uh, don't assign permissions to individual users. Instead, group objects together depending on security requirements and always use the AGDLP strategy. So we have a complete, say we have two videos on AGDLP so I'll be leaving a link in the description of Active Directory group types and group nesting. So let's summarize today's session. So we saw that the crux of today's session is when there is a conflict between share permission and NTFS permission, the most restricted will always win. So thank you for joining today's session. Hope you have enjoyed it. And I will be leaving the link for AGDLP and the group nesting in the, the description. And you can also see those videos in front of you right now. So thanks for joining today and see you in the next session. Thank you.